Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Delicious. It's actually not, in fact, my first cup of coffee because today is Tuesday, November 8th, Election Day here in the U.S., a really critical election day, midterm election, uh, which we don't always pay as much attention to as we should. I've been guilty of that. Um, this one's a critical one. So if you're on video, you will see I have my sticker. I went and voted. I went and voted today, even though we have um, early voting in New Mexico and I could have voted. Um, I've been gone. Those of you who follow uh, loyally, religiously, uh, know that I went to World Fantasy Con last week. I left last Thursday morning and I um, <laughs> really hope to get to early voting earlier in the week. It was on my list. It kept sliding down my list and reader, I did not make it. I was hoping I could maybe do early voting yesterday. I got back late Sunday night, but um, no, the Early voting ended on like November 5th. So I had to go this morning. I had to, to vote, and, but it was easy breezy. I got to, um, I went over there, but they opened at 7. I went over about 7.15 and uh, everybody was great, happy, saying good mornings. And yeah, I breezed right in. I was in and out five minutes. So it was great. I'm very grateful to be living in a blue state in wonderful New Mexico where they are not making it difficult for people to vote. And instead it was a seamless process with excellent instructions and cheers. So uh, here's my exhortation. If you are in the U.S., if you have not voted, please go vote. And, and I'm going to lay it out there. Please go vote Democrat because uh, if you're in doubt, just vote Democrat. Write down the ticket. Do not vote for any other party. If we want to make it be more than a two party system, then great. Let's work on that. But, um, <laughs> if, if the Republicans, uh, win some of these key races in this election, uh, we may never get to vote again. And I feel like that is not putting things too strongly. So, uh, please go vote, please go vote Democrat. Uh, at this point, it doesn't matter if you like the Democratic candidate or not, because it's basically a choice between voting for a human and voting for monsters. And I, it's really not putting it too strongly. Let's end with the political portion of today's podcast. So I'm back. Um, I am not in the groove. Uh, it was a good conference. I did not do much while I was there. Uh, I didn't look at email or deal with any of the things. <clears throat> I um, roomed with my friend Kelly Robson and we spent a lot of time talking and hanging out. It was in New Orleans and we went and toured around in New Orleans. I had a lot of great conversations in the bar with people, which is like, I feel like the main point of conventions moderated a panel on the author agent relationship, uh, which was very well received. It makes me very happy that people come up to me afterwards and tell me that I'm a great moderator because it's important to me to be a good moderator. And I, I love it that people say nice things to me about that. Um, so, so that was good. I'm, I'm not sure if I think I'm, I'm a little still, um, saturated with everything that I did and not quite ramped up again. I didn't do a podcast yesterday. Uh, Kelly flew back with me. She's here visiting until Thursday. So we're a little bit off schedule in the household with having a house guest. It's great to have her here. She um, went to World Fantasy and now she's visiting here. And then she flies to Chicago for WindyCon where she's a guest of honor this weekend. So, uh, this was really great for her to get to visit here. And uh, today we are going up to Abiquiu and I am taking her on to see Ghost Ranch and 
which is Georgia O'Keeffe's summer home and also her house and studio. Uh, we have a reservation for the tour there. So I'm very excited to show her this. Longtime listeners will know that I think all creatives, maybe all people period, but definitely creatives should do the Georgia O'Keeffe Home and Studio Tour in Abbey Q because it is a transcendent experience. Uh, yeah, so, so we're going to do that. I'm going to try to get a little bit of writing done this morning. The novella is still not finished. Um, I didn't work on it last week. I don't have that much to go, I think, but there we are. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to finish it all out this week, get it revised and proofed. Uh, some exciting news for those of you who are familiar with my very early work when I wrote contemporary BDSM romance. Uh, regular listeners will know that I got the rights back to all 10 Karina books. I republished the Covenant of Thorns books, that tri trilogy already, my very first fantasy romance trilogy. But now I have the seven books that were the contemporary erotic romance. So one of them is called Five Golden Rings, and it is a kinky Christmas escapade about a woman who goes to the Mexican Caribbean on Christmas holiday, gets dumped right before she leaves. She like gets dumped at the airport, her boyfriend calls. And so she decides to go anyway, because why not? And meets this guy who entices her into this kinky game involving the 12 days of Christmas, uh, a different gift every day. I've been working on covers with uh, Raven the Fabulous cover artist. So I'll be able to get those out soon. Um, Five Golden Rings should be out uh, soonish. Um, and same with Long Night of the Radiant Star. So we'll get these things out there. That's, it'll happen. I'm not too, too concerned. Um, yeah. So what else do I have to tell you all? Um, yeah, I'm sure I'm going to have many thoughts from World Fantasy. Kelly and I have been having so many conversations, mainly about like different writing communities and how they interplay with each other. Um, the ways that the Venn diagrams of communities overlap and don't. The World Fantasy Convention crowd is a really different one from my other crowds. One thing that was really cool, though, was seeing several people there who I had not seen since the former RWA and RT days. Uh, Jay Wells and Nicole Peeler were there uh, hanging out with Chelsea Mueller, who is now the chair of our of SIPWA's Romance Steering Committee. And Chelsea's really doing a fabulous job of recruiting people, uh, finding the people who uh, have been kind of orphaned by the loss of RWA. I mean, I know RWA is still going, but um, it's a lot of people not participating. It's not what it was. Um, RT is definitely gone, replaced by StoryCon, which is also like not satisfying what people want. I could say more, but I won't. Uh, it's not good for authors. Actually, I'm going to say that. Um, StoryCon, there's been some really awful stories coming out of that, of ways that they're being predatory to authors. And long-time listeners will know that I um, will not go to any conference that charges more for the author to attend than for readers to attend. And StoryCon it tries to dig out more and more money from authors, even than just extortionate table and registration fees. Oops, sorry, hit my treadmill down there. So, um, yeah, alas. So anyway, uh, these folks came to uh, World Fantasy. It was fun to get to sit and chat with them. Nicole Peeler uh, is now, I think, director. I was going to double check her title. So I did have her title correct. Uh, Nicole is Associate Professor of English and Director of the Writing Popular Fiction Program at Seton Hill. And I will link to that program 
it was really great to see Nicole at the conference. I didn't know she'd been doing that. So I'm going to love to connect her in with stuff that Sequa is doing. Uh, World Fantasy is is very a very close group. I, it, I would say clicky in some ways. Um, they lean heavily towards the horror end of fantasy. It's just like a 500 people were there. Um, but it was it was great. It um, spurred different kinds of thoughts and conversations, which I think is always a good thing. Yeah, I was going to say something else, but I'll, I'll stop there. I may have more thoughts, um, especially next week as I kind of get my brain back into place. Although it's going to be a crazy month because with Kelly here this week, next week I have like a full, clear, normal week. The week after that is American Thanksgiving. So I'll be traveling on Tuesday of that week to Tucson to spend with family. And I come back from Tucson and... On Sunday, I fly out to this writing retreat, which I'm still not clear how much I'm going to uh, post on social media about. For I, Yeah, I just don't know yet. I haven't even asked the other people who are going. It's kind of like a private group of people, and they invited me in. Um, and so I'm not sure how private they want to keep it. So, and then that leads us into December. So one thing I got to do, though, was um, talk to people about the Bandits book. I talked to a couple of author friends about it, and it was great to hear some of their brainstorming ideas. The best part is when I tell them which movie I'm working off of and that I'm doing it in. So, so here's the thing. I say alternate world fantasy, and Kelly Robson corrected me and said, you mean secondary world. And I think, again, this depends on what writing community you come out of. I say alternate world as in not our world. Kelly says it should be, which I know this comes very much from fantasy realms like Tao's Toolbox because Walter John Williams, who runs Tao's Toolbox, um, always says second world fantasy or secondary, uh, be, meaning a world totally not ours. Kelly thinks that alternate world fantasy means that it's one that's slightly different than ours. I mean, I, that's what alternate history means. Um, you know, it's funny because, you know, like we don't really have anyone that enforces these definitions. So anyway, uh, alternate or secondary world, taking something that a story that happened in our world in this movie and moving it into that and telling people that that's what I want to do is take X movie bandits, take bandits and put it in this secondary world and watching their eyes light up and their expressions brighten and be like wow so hopefully i can execute this idea because it is a good one uh so the other thing and i actually had this on my list to talk about because i've been meaning to uh and maybe it's not all that important but i've been uh like many many people all over the world uh, listening to Taylor Swift's Midnight's album, which has now broken like every record there is to break, including that the Billboard Top 10, all 10 of those songs were from this album. Uh, and nobody's done that before. So go, go Taylor. Uh, long time listeners know that She's My Girl has been for a very, very long time. So it's great to see how amazing she's doing. Uh, I've been very much obsessed with the song and video Bejeweled. I, it, in fact, in my own like personal hit list, Bejeweled kicked Shake It Off from my uh, ringtone, and now it's Bejeweled, which I feel like is a thing. Um, it says something about me, it says something about where I am in my life, how I'm feeling about things. Uh, Shake It Off, I had had on there since I started to take over as SIFWA president. And it was kind of funny because like that ringtone would go off in the board meetings and people were like, oh, nice. Um, things were not easy at first. There was a lot of stuff going on 
and shake it off is a great song for that for like whew, get rid of all this stuff um don't listen to the haters right haters gonna hate and um, players complain right so um but now the song is bejeweled and I just want to give some thoughts. I love the video. I love the Easter eggs. I feel very proud of myself that as a longtime Swifty, I feel like I've gotten picked out some Easter eggs that I hadn't seen in other videos. I only watched a few early on, but um, yeah, there's some, some cool Easter eggs in there that reference back to earlier things. I am going to go on record saying that I think that the black hooded cloak that she wears as she enters the elevator is a direct reference back to ready for it on reputation which uh is one of my favorite songs also uh, i feel like with bejeweled she is signaling some of the end of her reputation era of being angry and feeling attacked and now she has liberated herself and with bejeweled uh, i love some of the images and the lines in it where she says I can still make the whole place shimmer uh, to me that's very much about owning your creative expression and having confidence in that and saying yes I can make things shimmer I have this creative power to bring this and she has another line where she says um, I miss you but I miss sparkling and I think that's so important that we shouldn't give up our sparkle to anyone else that if it comes down to a choice between having this person and having the ability to sparkle that we should choose the, the sparkle that we should um, choose to to make everything shimmer and so I love her word choices I love her stories and metaphors that way and so so that's where I am I feel like I have kind of emerged from the uh, from the shake it off on always handy to approach things at but the, moving more into a phase of feeling like I can make things shimmer uh, shake it off is more reactive making things shimmer is more proactive reaching out into the world so uh, so yeah that's I that's my um pop culture uh, immersive zeitgeist reference for for the time being uh, yeah so I am going to call it good on this podcast a little bit shorter today but at least you got one I was debating whether to do one I don't know if I'll do one Thursday morning uh, because Kelly has to leave fairly early and we're gonna meet up for writer coffee so that'll be nice but um, we'll reiterate if you have not voted in the US please go vote please go vote Democrat but there's just <laughs> no no other way to vote and and if you disagree with me yeah unfollow don't buy my books all of these things because uh, yeah that's the point that we are at so hope you all have a wonderful Tuesday and I will talk to you maybe Thursday maybe Friday you all take care bye bye